Hi, welcome to Clay Play. My name is Emily and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a cup using slab building. We have our clay here. Uh, we've got stoneware clay with grog. Um, I've got just over 600 grams here. Um, then also you will be needing a toolkit, a ruler, um, a couple of pencils and a rolling pin. Um, if you don't have a rolling pin, a glass bottle will do just fine. And then lastly, just a little bit of water. So first we are going to roll out a slab. Um, we need to make it as long as possible. Um, so just make some space on your board and take your rolling pin, pushing away, start to roll out your clay. You want to just rotate your clay as you go. Like I said, rolling away from us. And next, I'm just going to get my pencils as a guide, um, just so that I can get the slab at the same consistency. There is a slight little bubble in here and that you can see them come up every now and then. They're just little ear pockets, um, which we just need to pop. Any ear pockets cause a bit of trouble with pottery as when they dry in the kiln, the moisture gets stuck in that ear po pocket and it will cause a crack once it's in the kiln. So we just want to make sure we pop any potential ear bubbles. Now I'm going to mark out a rectangle piece to make the cylinder of my cup. I'm just wanting to savour as much clay as I can. I'm just going to give it nine and a half centimetres. If you've got a nice piece along here, what I quite like to do is just to make a really quick little handle um, using the width of my ruler. By all means, um, it doesn't need to be this thick, you can make it thinner, whatever you've got really and probably only needs, I mean, to be generous, about 15 centimetres. I'm just gonna put that aside for later. So now we just wanna roll up our clay. Just be really careful when you're first removing it from the mat. And we're just gonna roll it up to get a good size there. We want to savour some of this end piece for the bottom of the cup. So that's pretty good about there. So that's giving me 22 centimetres. Now I can peel that completely off. And we're going to be joining those seams there. So to do that, we need to score and slip. So roughing up those edges. Adding a little bit of water. As you would have noticed, um, I'm not using an actual slip here, I'm just using water just because this um, stoneware clay is really good for hand building. Um, but if you want to be on the safe side of things, by all means go make yourself slips and slips. So all it is, is putting a little bit of clay in there so it's like a toothpaste consistency of, of wet clay. Um, and that just acts as a glue essentially to help stick the clay together. So then taking your wooden tool, you just want to blend up that 
that seam. Don't be shy in pulling the clay over. We really want to blend this so we can go back in and smooth it out again later. But you do want to move that clay from one side to the other to ensure that that seam is fully covered up. Then taking our extra piece, going to pop our cup on top. Just make sure it is rounded as possible. So just taking that wooden tool again, going around, evening out your circle. And if you just cut it just a tad bit bigger, then the cup itself just gives you the extra bit to blend. And now we're just going to blend up all the way around. Then on the inside, we're going to go ahead and push down the clay over the seam on the inside. Now, if you have a turntable, um, it's quite handy for this process as you can just stay in the one position and just easily rotate around. And you need to spend some time here tidying this up. Then you can take any one of your tools just to start to smooth off the edges. This little um, steel thumb is great because you can just bend it a little bit to carve away some of that extra clay that you might have accumulated at the bottom. Now that our vessel's been tidied up, um, we can just leave this to dry and harden out to that leather hard stage. And while that's happening, um, we're just going to take our handle and place it over something with a bit of curve like that. I'm gonna leave that for just a couple, maybe an hour or so. It's summer here, so it's quite warm. Um, and then come back and attach it to my cup. Okay, so my piece is been sitting here for about an hour and a bit. Um, it's pretty firm now, so I can still go through and smooth out imperfections, but it's holding its shape. So that's considered leather hard now. Um, so what I'm going to do is take my handle, you can see here, that has dried with that curvature, and attach it to my cup. Just going to make it a little bit smaller. Um, I'm just feeling like that's a little bit too big. So if you've got a knife, that's really is best at this stage. But if not, you can use your needle tool. Cut a bit that off the top. And leave that straight. And then I'm just going to shave a little bit off on an angle on the bottom. And then before we were talking about making a slip and when I'm applying my handles I do always make a slip even with this clay. Um, so all I've got in here is a little bit of water and I'm just mixing in a little bit of the same clay that we're using today so that we've got some like glue like um, substance to stick on our handle. So you just want to go through and measure up where you'd like to place it. Okay, and then go through and score that area. Then again on your handle. Adding some of that slip. And 
And then you just want to really firmly push it in. Supporting as you go. And just smooth out the edges with your finger. I like to then go in with a paintbrush and pick up more of that slip and just kind of go around all of those joins. I'm just taking a wet sponge, you can clean it all up a little bit, smooth out those edges. Once finished tidying up, your piece is ready to dry. Okay, so our cup has been drying for about two days now, and so we're ready just to um, finish it off before we leave it to completely dry. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in and with a grater, just grate down the edge of my cup a little bit just to even it out. And then I'm going to go around with a wet sponge and smooth out any imperfections. And then finally, if you would like, you can go ahead and um, write your name or a design or something like that in the bottom with your needle tool. So your piece is finished and you need to just let it dry now. So I suggest that you find a place um, that the environment's pretty settled. So I, what I mean by that is that there's no wind flow coming past. Um, it's not sitting in direct sunlight. So in a cupboard, in a box, something like that is great. And depending on the time of year and your climate, it will take anywhere between five to two weeks for your piece to dry. So this piece here has been drying for about a month and is ready to be bisked. Um, so a couple of tricks that you can use to check that it is ready is just a tap on your piece. And you can hear that um, echoing, whereas very dull on the, the piece that we've just made. The other thing you can do is just take a dab of water and pop it onto your piece and it will start to evaporate. So those are the tricks to, to make sure that your pottery is dry. You will notice that it will lighten in colour as well as the moisture starts to evaporate. And then it is ready to bisque. Thank you for joining me for this tutorial. If you have any questions, please pop them in the comments below. Or alternatively, you can reach us at clayplay.co.nz.